Learn the most advanced recruiting techniques. Land the most desirable talent. Launch your company towards massive success. This is the Higher Power Radio Show with Rick Gerard. I'm Rick Gerard, and welcome to the Higher Power Radio Show. We help entrepreneurs and hiring managers avoid costly hiring mistakes by identifying a specific problem and providing proven solutions to enable your company to win the right hire. We share insights from top performing rebel entrepreneurs, disruptors, and industry experts like our guest today, Mr. Jeff Earl. He is the former CEO of MobilityWare. Jeff has held numerous C-level positions throughout his career. His experience spans across startups and privately held and large enterprises, including ADP, Western Digital, MobilityWare, and most recently as the COO of Blast. Jeff focuses on building high-performance teams and evolving award-winning cultures focused on multi-generational workforces, developing coaching key executives, and helping companies to develop strategies to scale for growth and or exit, which is what makes Jeff the perfect expert for today's topic. Jeff, welcome to the Higher Power Radio Show today. Thanks, Rick. So happy to be here. Appreciate it. I'm happy to have you. And thank you, by the way. I know this pandemic has been uh, kind of challenging on all of us, but um, we're all under house arrest right now, as I can see you are as well. So I'm, I'm happy that you've been able to join us. So Thanks, uh, really, really appreciate your accommodating my uh, stay at home needs to social distance. Thank you. We, we all have them. We all have them. All right. So today we're going to focus on why right now is a great opportunity to hire. And then we're going to talk a little bit about eight players. What are they? And then how to identify and evaluate your company for performance during this downturn and elevate that performance. Sound like a plan? Yeah, it's a good one. Let's go. All right. Let's do it, Jeff. So why is it important right now? to be proactive and higher? Yeah, great question. Um, well, obviously we're you know in uh, uncharted waters, uh, yeah. not just with uh, staying at home and, and the fear of getting sick and maybe even dying, but uh, in the workplace uh, as it relates to employment, the employment picture, really the unemployment picture. Uh, we came from you know a, an environment uh, the best in history from an unemployment perspective, and now we're heading towards you know, one of the worst. And it was uh, like three weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Right. Um, but to your point, it really creates a lot of opportunistic um, elements to what companies can do to um, upgrade their talent uh, for the future. And I, I love that opportunistic word. That's it to to pick off some good talent today. Gosh, you know, it was funny that we're doing this episode because I saw a tweet this morning from Mark Benioff and Mark Benioff actually said that they had twenty two hundred jobs that are open. And they're prioritizing these jobs for referrals through friends and family of employees who are specifically have been displaced due to the virus. I mean, it, if that's not uh, evidence that we should all be doing that, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what is. Yeah. So obviously, if your pockets are deep enough, like Salesforce, that uh, you can afford to hire a couple of thousand people. Uh, even in today's environment, then yeah, go for it. But I think even smaller companies have the opportunity to to pick off some talent. I mean, I, you know, it's no secret that uh, other than maybe your IP, talent is your your uh, tightest and most important asset. Yeah. Um, and right now, you know, if you're trying to get uh, investments and, and raise around the funding, um, it's clear that many investors. I've been a, a Tech Coast Angels. Um, investor and member for over 10 years. And we always talk about it's not just the horse, but it's also the jockey, right? So the CEO, but the CEO's team is an extension of that jockey. So it's really important to get really good people. And now they're available. So it's really the jockeys or actually it's the racer and the pit crew, right? That's yeah, really what good, you're looking good for. Good one. Yeah. Even better, uh, better metaphor. Yeah. Thanks. Rick. <laughs> I don't know if it's a better <laughs> metaphor. No, it is. It is. <laughs> My, uh, my my uh, my mom watches a lot of NASCAR, so like I got sucked into that's it. Good. Right? So, yeah, that's uh, I like that one. Yeah. So here's the thing. Right now, you have a lot of people that are worried, but if you've got if you're in a position where you've raised some funding and you can make it through this, you should continue the hiring process. You should continue to like at least um, even just show your people that we're still growing, right? You should continue to take advantage of this and use it as an opportunity. A lot of these larger companies 
a lot of them are going to use this as an opportunity for them to hate to say it, but shed kind of their lower performers and they're going to upgrade with higher performers. That's just what happens in these, these situations. So why not, you don't need to shed it. Usually if you're a startup, you probably don't have any too many low performers, but use this as an opportunity to elevate that performance by showing the world, showing everybody within your organization that you're committed to still growing the company. No doubt. Great point. And one minor uh, piece of that is uh, there's a lot of flexibility right now. I was on another webinar yesterday about um, how do you find a job? It was kind of the opposite side in this yeah. troubling economy. And the notion of being flexible as a candidate to say, I can delay my start time to save you money. I can um, come in and you know work uh, on a project basis for cheaply until you're ready to really hire me full time. I, you know, you can't work really for free uh, legally. It's it's tough, but you can do project based stuff um, and keep the cost down. But get yourself ready, build relationships, uh, learn uh, for, you know, if you're new coming in, you have lots to learn and you can get that started sooner than later and lock that candidate in if you're the hiring company, but not have to shell out the dollars up front. So there's a lot of flexibility and capabilities that, that people have today, given the circumstances. Yeah. And I think it's important, though, that the candidates, even though they need to bring in a paycheck, either do the work as a contractor and, and get paid for it or yeah. be selective now. Cause I think the opportunity goes both ways. Mm -hmm. Now you have the ability to be selective and try to really spend the time to think about what it is you want and, and target those companies who fulfill that for you. Yeah, it's a great point. Uh, a lot of people are doing soul searching of all kinds. Yeah. But yeah. as it relates to career pathing, uh, it's a great time to uh, in take inventory yeah, of what you want, what you're good at, and what you want to do next. It's not always obvious, but now's a really good time to think about that. Okay. So let's talk about the concept of an A player, because I think there's going to be A players that are out there that normally you have to do a lot of work to get. And What's your definition of an A player? And let's kind of, uh, let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that's a great one. So, you know, the concept came up with a book, Top Grading, I don't know, 10, 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, and there are a number of elements that I, I really embraced then. And I think it's even more important today. And back to your point about being opportunistic, we have a chance now to go find these people, right? And we can talk about how we do that. But, uh, you know, an A player is not just that person who's a top 10% performer. That's kind of duh. Uh, but they really have to be willing to um, come to work for you, uh, given the compensation level you're willing to offer, uh, who their boss is, what their role and responsibilities are, uh, what your culture is like, right? So there's this whole microcosm of, of things that a candidate looks at before they make a decision to come on board, and it's well beyond comp, obviously. Uh, but to get that A player, you really need to align and be um, – candid with yourself and, and practical and realistic, I should say, about what are we really willing to afford? What are we willing to pay? What is our culture really? And then define your A player as opposed to, I need the best person in the industry because you might not be able really to afford them. Well, that's, that's I think, a big problem. Like a lot of times companies will chase people who are out of a name brand company or something mm -hmm. to that effect. And I see that's where they get into trouble. Right. Well, we, yeah. If we can just get this guy out of Google, We'll be able to yeah. make it, but that's not the best person necessarily for your role. That that's an ego hire a lot of times. Well said. When I was at Mobility, where actually Google, <laughs> interestingly, and Amazon both have local um, activities, and and mostly on the engineering side, and Amazon even has some game uh, production here. And we were always looking to pick those folks off, uh, but it was hard. They had stock options. I mean, they had these packages that we knew we couldn't compete with. So unless yeah. you really found somebody that was really searching for something different uh, and IE was willing to accept your culture, your, your work process, et cetera, and who they're going to work for, and they were kind of burned out on the big brand company, uh, then you wouldn't be able to attract them. And what's harder is getting someone out of college, right? You'd think about a Gen, uh, Gen Y or a Gen Z. Um, they want to, you know, tell mom and dad as they graduate that, yeah, I got this great job with Google. You know, not too many people say, I got this great job with, you know, mobility wear. Like, where? Uh, so <laughs> we had that challenge and lived through that. So you've really got to reset your expectations back to your point. Yeah, most definitely. Well, I think, you know, you just brought up a 
interesting point. When you pull people at a large company, they have to be really burned out on the large company <laughs> environment. And they have to really want to des like desire to have a smaller company where they can be more impactful. But if you're a yeah. startup, you should be looking for people who are builders, number first and foremost. And, and maybe I kind of break down people into builders, improvers, and maintainers, right? I think people fall into those categories. Um, builders are the ones who are gonna get your company moving forward. They're gonna be passionate about it. And so just at its core level, if you look for people who are who have an innate desire or want to build something, you know, that that right there kind of keys you off into somebody who's probably going to do well for your organization. Yeah, that's a great one. I mean, I, I use the metaphor, there's pioneers, there's vacationers, and there's prisoners, <laughs> um, right? I like the it. The pioneers are the A players. They want to charge yep. the hill. Uh, they're assertive. They're innovative. They're willing to take risks. Uh, and then you've got the, the maintainers, as you mentioned, I call them vacationers, right? They're just there to kind of <laughs> chug along and they're happy enough just chugging along. Um, and then you've got the prisoners. They're the ones who feel handcuffed. They're at the water cooler complaining, but they never really leave because there's something keeping them there. So you have, as you take <laughs> and inventory. And they're holding you prisoner. <laughs> yeah, right. You uh, take inventory of, you know, who you've got on your team that, again, to be opportunistic, you want to obviously identify and weed out your prisoners, uh, you know, let them go, release them. It's OK. We'll all be happy. Right. Them included. And they'll probably find a better situation. Exactly. All right. You're listening to the Higher Power Radio Show. I'm Rick Gerard. For our podcast listeners, we're going to take a quick educational moment from our sponsors. Check out what we do at stridesearch.com. There you'll find additional content and resources and help to build process to land grade hires. Today, our guest is Jeff Earl. Jeff is the former CEO of Blast and CEO of um, MobilityWare. I think I just said that wrong, didn't I? So we're talking about uh, hiring A players in, in opportunistic hires. So where do we start? You've had experience with this. You've come out of a couple of different... Um, uh, recessions in the past. Have you not, Jeff? Oh, yeah. All right. So how do we start picking off people? Like, where should an entrepreneur take advantage of this time frame right now? So really good question. I, I feel like there's three large steps. So the first one is sort of what we just talked about, which is um, getting aligned internally and defining. And the alignment part is almost as important as the definition. Yeah. around what is an A player? What are we chasing? Do we want someone making 300 grand a year at Google or are we okay at 150 with somebody who isn't at Google, right? The second step is to really look at your team uh, and teams of people or your senior team, usually in a startup, you're, you're thinner um, from a layer perspective. But you know who, if you were on the Titanic and you had to get off, you've heard this metaphor before and you've got one lifeboat with 10 people, who would be in the lifeboat? And who's not, right? And those that you wouldn't put in the lifeboat are obviously those that you want. You have an opportunity to maybe trade out uh, if you can't build them up and, and make them better. So, uh, look at your performance management uh, history of of what people have performed and haven't. Um, you can do some force ranking, which is the the boat analogy. And then the third step really is um, developing, I think, a really good recruiting strategy along the both the strategy itself, but the methods and capabilities with which you do your recruiting in these change times. Can, can, um, can we go back just a second? If you're going through and you're evaluating what you already have, you mentioned um, vi uh, pioneers, vacationers, and prisoners, right? Mm -hmm. So um, what's the line between pioneers and vacationers? Like, how do you, how, how do you differentiate between those? Uh, well, part of it's just gut feel and you just yeah. sort of know if you've been working with someone for a while. But if you want to make it more objective uh, than subjective, um, as I said, you can go back to the performance review. If you have any internal performance management um, methodology <laughs> that you do at the end of every year. I don't if, know, you know any entrepreneurs meriting, that do. You don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> no, many no, companies no, don't. Saying. I'm just saying a lot of entrepreneurs don't have any no. of that process in place. Right? Great point. So, yeah. uh, you know, pick five. If, so if you're an entrepreneur and you have a team, pick five key competencies that you really believe are most important to not just to succeed, but far exceed in your, in your company. And then take those five and map each of your people very quickly in a scale of call it one to four, four being they're amazing, one meaning they stink. 
uh, and just grade everybody. You can kind of come up with a score uh, against these five or seven core competencies, and it'll start to unfold for you if it's, you know, you want to go beyond just gut feel about who's a pioneer and who's a vacationer. Because if they're not fulfilling the, the key things you need and want them to do, especially uh, the investment you're making as a startup, because every person's expensive to you, yeah. uh, then, you know, you want to do something different with them, and it's a chance to upgrade. Very, very true. All right. So then the next step you said was uh, develop a recruiting strategy. How, how did you approach that? Yeah. So it's different times again, right? Um, in a, with a lot of people available, I think recruiting teams, whether you're an internal recruiting team or you're just the CEO doing recruiting yourself, um, or you hire a third party uh, recruiting organization, which is a great way to do it. Um, Be you, picky. Pardon? Be picky. Be picky, right. And um, the goal is not to be lazy, I think, even more so than being picky, meaning you're going to get flooded with resumes. You put a job opening out there uh, in today's world, you're going to get tons and tons. I would say don't fall back on your laurels of just looking at those what are called active candidates, the ones coming to you, and still spend time on the passive candidates. Still do your LinkedIn searches again, whether it's internal recruiting team or external, and go after people maybe that you've talked to before, as you mentioned earlier, or that you've never been able to talk to, but now's a good time. Um, don't just sit back and wait because you will have fewer A players, theoretically. It's just a numbers game. Then if you go and, and look for passive candidates that aren't looking for a job, they're still working, they'll still change in today's world. Their business model of the company they're with might be disrupted. They might be less happy. They see it as opportunity too. So I'd say the, the goal there is just not to be lazy. Yeah. And it's really important that you revisit those people that you missed on. Mm -hmm. This is a great time to, to revisit the people who you really wanted to hire. Mm -hmm. um, reach out, say hi, follow up yeah. with them, see how things are going. If you can demonstrate that you're hiring, you're growing through this, then you're going to become much more attractive. Much more yeah. Attractive. So one anecdotal story, when I was at Mobility, where we had met with this one particular gentleman who was a senior level engineer. And when we talked to him, he, he ultimately was interested, but said no. We called him a year later and his circumstances had changed. He didn't get the promotion he was waiting for. You know, his stock options were vested. So the money didn't matter anymore. The timing was so much better. And we were able to pick him off and bring him over. See. And had we not called him a year later, uh, he might not have thought about calling us. So to your yeah. point, you've just got to be assertive and not afraid to make that call, even, even in today's times, and go after those people that you either met before or would hope to meet because they might be available in today's world. Even if four weeks ago, that person yeah. turned down your offer, call great them. Point. Yeah, call great them. point. Depending on your industry, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah. if, you, if you can do it, if it's somebody that you really wanted, man, there's there's no there's no reason not to. All right, yeah. so um, anything, all right, so I, I know we're getting a little tight on time here. So what would be kind of two or three key takeaways they can give the audience that can plug into their business right now? Sure, sure. So, I mean, one thing we didn't talk about is, set, is and I'll do it real quick, You've got to develop uh, some key capabilities as it relates to doing what we're doing here, which is having conversations remotely, yeah. um, whether it's a phone screen for initial set of interviews or doing an interview like this for a candidate. It might be multiple interviews like this. You've got to figure out Zoom or Skype, embrace this technology and get good at it because it's likely that we're going to be hunkered down at least part time for many of us for quite a number of months. And it's not intuitive. A lot of the skills you need uh, that you would normally just do live and in person sitting in a conference room in your office, you, you don't have that availability. So learn this, figure it out, get good at it, practice the right backgrounds, whatever. Um, there's tons out there on the internet about best practices on, on these video interviews, but, but you really have to embrace it because you want to be that company that has done that and to look better for that candidate who's looking at other people. Um, and I'm glad you mentioned that because I'm going to be putting out content on that uh, later in the week. So yeah. we're going to actually talk about how to how to do a great video interview and phone that's, screens. That's great. Because those, yeah, that's those, a good one. That's really all we have to rely about rely yeah. on right so, now is just going to be phone yeah. screens and video. Sorry. Interviews. So takeaways. I mean, I, you know, it's I'd say 
summarizing, it'd be, you know, reevaluate your talent, look top to bottom, um, look at upgrading potentially as necessary, um, embrace new and different strategies and ways of, of focusing on A players and how to find them. Uh, and then the last thing we just talked about is really embrace the new technology and figure out how to be really, really good at it uh, to put your best foot forward. And by the way, video interviews, I think, are going to be easier once people get used to them. Agreed. Because you, you can have them, I mean, they're going to start on time, they're going to end on time. It's going to be much easier to manage rather than walking somebody from a room to a room to room. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of pluses for it. Totally agree. Yeah. yeah. All right, Chu, we're just about out of time for today's show. Jeff, thanks so much for your time investment today. And I want to welcome you to the Higher Power Radio community. Now, um, I'm sure that some of the members of our community would like to kind of find out more about you, reach you, or maybe even talk to you. Uh, what's the best way for them to reach you? You bet. Um, email's easiest. It's simple. It's jeff.earl at cox.net, J-E-F-F dot E-R-L-E -E at cox.net. Happy to respond to uh, uh, helping anybody or answering questions in any way. And Rick, I really appreciate the invite and, and having me here today. Thank you oh, so much. And I really appreciate you taking the time, and uh, especially during house arrest. Hopefully, I, I didn't, uh, <laughs> I didn't uh, totally, uh, you know, um, bust up your binge washing that you might be doing. Oh, good. <laughs> um, we're done. We're done with Tiger King. We've moved on. <laughs> nice. I'm still stuck on Disney Plus. I don't know. <laughs> So I want to thank this week's episode for tuning into this week's episode of, I want to thank the listening audience for the, tuning into this week's episode of Firepower. Quick thanks to our team, our engineer, Christopher Decker, our producers, Andrea Ballin, um, Ariel Kramer, and Ayla Gerard. If you're listening to the podcast, please subscribe, review, and share. We're listening. We welcome your feedback. After all, this show is for you. Join the Higher Power Radio community at Higher, that's H-I-R-E, Power, P-O-W-E-R, Radio, R-A-D-I-O dot com. Or you can drop me an email at rick at stridesearch.com. Tune in next week. Our guest is going to be Neil Sahota. Neil is an AI expert and the author of Own the AI Revolution. I'm your host, Rick Gerard, and you have been listening to the Higher Power Radio Show. Aloha. Thank you for listening to Higher Power Radio. Catch our LinkedIn Live show every Tuesday at noon or download the podcast on iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, or your favorite podcast platform. We appreciate you joining us on Higher Power Radio with your guide to recruitment success. Rick Gerard.